welcome back to Sussex Farms for episode 34 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Okay, Karen, straight off the back of the last episode, something very peculiar. I was seeding and fertilising, and as you can see, the fertilising state, or what it looks like, it had gone darker. So that was fantastic. But I got to the end and thought, oh, I'd better check the map. According to the map, that whole section here that I've seeded and fertilised, it didn't put the third fertilising state on. I have absolutely no idea why. So what I've done is unloaded all the fertiliser, that's just over there on the grass. So the seeder, planter, is literally just planting now, it's all it's doing, it's not fertilising as well. I've come and grabbed the um, agrimash harrow, weeder type piece of machinery. Going back over, or going over the sections now that have been done without fertiliser, and I'm getting the third state. I don't know why it's not doing it with the seeder. I know it's got two cut up fertilizer the states on it already, but normally when you seed that kind of that changes the state and allows the fertilizer within the seeder to work as well. So I'm not quite sure. It's a bit puzzling, but needless to say, this is now running over. Um, and what I have to do is come back and this section here, um, I'm gonna have to go over that maybe with the fertilizer spreader. Um, might be my only option really, it's a bit peculiar, I don't know why it's doing it. And then what I'll do is once I finish the field, I'll load the fertiliser back into the um, into the planter. We'll take it back to the farm, unload it and I'll just put it back into the fertiliser spreader. I'm assuming I'll have the same problem in all the fields that I've prepped already. Um, yeah, don't know, we'll see. I'll have a bit of a fiddle around and see. Because some fields I did the second fertilising state, then cultivated after it. Um, so maybe once I've done that, it'll work on those fields. I think it's the fields where I've did fertilising and that's how it's been left. It's already registered that it's had a fertilising state, so it won't put another one on. That's just my assumption. You know. Yeah, because it's coming up to here now, because it's saying to itself it's already had fertiliser. But it's not, yeah, it's not registered it. Never mind. Uh, so this will carry on. I think I'm going to buy the field next to us. That's got barley in it. Again, we'll just have a load there for feeding the chickens. Um, and it will also give me straw swath again. So potentially we've got a load of straw on hand. Should we need it for bed? I don't think we're going to run out of straw this year. I think we're going to be fine. But what I'm going to do is probably produce um, more hay on the grass fields again this year. So we'll have more straw. We'll have more. Uh, I might even do some more silage too, I'm thinking. Um, if we fill up our storage at the main farm, we can use the big storage silo over by the garden centre. And we'll just make sure we've got a load of it on hand. Um, it would seem churlish to leave it and say, let's, we won't bother this year, there's no point, we don't need it. Then get towards winter and then we start to run low. I know we can go around and we can buy it from different places, but if we've got the ability to make it, we'll make it. Field 38 is done. I bought field 39 and I've bought, I bought another field, yeah. I bought field 39, that's got barley in. I'm just going over that with the agrimash now and then I've got to go over that section with the agrimash and then it'll just be that bit there. We'll need a fertilising state once we get into the first growth stage. I have bought field 30. It has already got sugar beet in it. So it was only about 44 grand I think it was but it's got no fertilising state so what I'll do is I'll bring the agro mash down there we'll go over that one um, and now we've got to look at I've got to decide what I'm putting where um, I've got field 6, got those ones got field 11, got field 13 I'm going to do soybean and corn I'm not putting corn back in that field because I had corn in it before um, and the whole crop rotation thing probably not the best idea I think I'm going to put corn in 11 and 6, and I'm going to soybean, all of those, and field 13, I think. Yeah, what I'm going to do at the moment, though, I'm going to do this... I, I, did I say I moved the pallets around? I took those ones out of the way for the time being and just left one. So I'm going to let that fill up. When that's full, I'm going to bring one of these ones in. That one can then be taken to be sold, because they're just filling up too randomly at the moment. They're all over the place. I pro like I said, I don't, didn't need to get that many. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our chicken kind of cull as such. Um, roosters. Uh, I think I'm probably going to get rid of a couple more. Let's 
move four of those. And what I'm going to do now is go through the rest of the chickens and I'm going to take out all the males. Now that sh that's going to get rid of a load and we're not going to make a huge amount of money on them. But you've got to remember, off our original ones we bought, all of our females, they're all additionals. They're all new births and we will get more new births. And what I'll gradually do is weed out all of the, whoops, all of the males. Um, so those new births, I'm not going to, oh, actually to be fair, I could have made something on those rather than take out... I mean, you will make money on them, don't get me wrong, but they're not like meat birds, so you know what, I'm just going to... Regardless of what I make on them, I'm trying to free up as much room as I can for females who are going to be egg layers. And it's the eggs where we're going to make our money. Because although the um, Rhode Island Reds... Oops, I just moved a female over. Oh, there it is. Move that back. I think I've just bought another one. Ah, <laughs> oh, never mind. Um, so, yeah, like I say. Then hopefully we'll just be productive. It will just be all egg layers. I mean, the logic is sound. I could be, this could be a complete, completely pointless exercise. It may well be, they'll be fine, but theoretically that kind of makes sense. Because the males don't grow into roosters. Roosters are a completely separate, a separate beast. Um, and whilst I've got a full um, pen run of um, 500 I can't get any new births and those males are taking up space that I could have for egg layers so like I say it's not about making huge amounts of money hopefully the money will come from selling eggs but again it's a side project project isn't it it's interesting to do anyway I'm going to carry on doing this I'm going to get rid of them all and then what we'll do is as we get new births, I'll just go through each time and take out the males, so then hopefully we will reach a point where we've just got females. Right, I'm over here at field 7, 8, 9 and 10. Um, obviously the temperature is not up high enough, and I don't think it will be now until late spring, plus we're not in the planting window. Um, if you look here where the red line is, um, we're not ready for soybean and corn yet. Um, I can carry on doing sugar beet but to be fair I've done a massive field of sugar beet and we've just bought another small field so that's fine um, the temperature's not there we're not in the planting window yet so as far as soybean and corn goes there's nothing else I can do planting wise my intention was to carry on planting but I can't do that yet I've put the fertilizer back into the planter um, because this is now about ground state these fields I did two fertilizing states and it was ploughed then I came over and cultivated just because I wanted to cultivate it. Which means when I now seed, I should get the seed and fertilising state on it. The problem is if I left it on the last fertilising state, it won't then take a new one, which is a bit peculiar. Field 11 is ploughed, as I think is field 13. So my next job is going to be, I think, we're going to grab a plough. I'm going to plough, uh, not a plough, the cultivator. And we're going to cultivate those over. Um... Hang on a minute. Oh yes, over there. Um, we're going to cultivate those so that the ground state has changed ready for um, fertilising and planting. Um, what I'm also going to do is sell some milk. We've got over 10,000 litres of milk and I reckon we're going to make a bit of money here because um, we put down our little farm shop the little vending machine thing is paying incredibly well for milk at the moment and eggs so what I might do is take one of those pallets of eggs and the one that's got a, one of them that's got a few in because it's paying fairly highly um, so I'll show you what I mean we're gonna whiz over and do this um, this is all part and parcel of the work that needs to be done I don't want to jump ahead I thought what I would do is go through to late spring and let's just carry on with the planting but then there's all these jobs in between that I don't want to suddenly be there and people think, well, what's happened, you know? I know myself watching Let's Plays, you know, there's nothing worse than watching a Let's Play and you kind of go from one episode onto the next episode and loads of stuff has changed and you can't work out how or why. And sometimes the actual um, the YouTuber doesn't mention it, doesn't say how, how how they got there. And you're like, oh, okay. 
Um, I, I like to be able to kind of follow along. I know I've done it myself before and it's frustrating and I, I know it's frustrating. So I want to try and remedy that. Yeah, so this is ploughed. So what I'm thinking now is it's got two fertilising states. If I cultivate, that will change the, the state. So then when I come over this with the seeder planter, it will, it will fertilise. That's... <laughs> That's the theory, anywho. So our weeder, Harrow, is carrying on over on field 39. When that's done, see, it's gone from the dark to a slightly lighter now, so hopefully then I should be able to fertilise this tank. We'll get this one done. Um, yeah, field 39 is being done at the moment with the weeder slash Harrow. Then I go back onto field 38 and finish off the bit I didn't quite get done. Um... An object wrong. I assume that's here and not. Or maybe it's over another field. We'll go and check that in a minute. I have got a contract for fertilising for field 20 something. What field was it? Let's go across. Field 24 for 16 grand. There is a contract for transport for mushrooms, but I've had problems with mushrooms in the past, so I might stay well clear of that. Um, so I'll do the fertilising one, so what I'll do is once I'm happy with this and it's cracking on, I will go and grab the fertiliser spreader, spreader and we'll go over. I have topped that up. So we're good to go with that. And that's the, the beauty of doing contracts and bits and bobs in between fertising jobs and stuff. When you've got to go and then buy some fertiliser or whatever you need and if you do fill that thing up and you spend 7,000, 10,000, whatever you're going to spend. It's not it's not a problem. It's not, you know, you're not scrabbling around trying to find money from somewhere to do it. Anyway, I'm still racking my brains now thinking where do I go from here? Um, this one is going to continue obviously but I want to start on a new map and I'm, I'm really stuck. I don't know. Uh, there have been some great ones I've reviewed recently. And I, like I said, I want to do a kind of pioneering, start from scratch type thing. Like I did a Ravenport right at the very start. But I haven't found one that really kind of has, has really grabbed my attention and gone, whoa, you know. La Coronella, or Ca La Coronella, I was corrected on that. Um, kind of fits the bill. Slot count is incredibly high. But I did it on Geiselsberg, I managed to get away with it, the slot count on that was high and I still managed to do it. But that was just by leasing equipment, I didn't really buy stuff, I just leased things when I needed it. I had a, a few items of core machinery, but other than that, we kind of went from there. So, anyway, all good. I um, just want to make sure we've got turning room all the way around and I'll get this going. And then we'll go and sort the fertilising, come on, do the last little bit. Come on. There we go, right. So let's go up and down. We'll be good to go. I'll check on field 13 as well, see if that needs... Because I'm pretty sure I left that in a ploughed state as well. So we'll get the cultivator over that too. Right, I'll jump out. Let's we'll carry on. Fantastic. Right, let's go and get this fertilising started. And then we'll sort out doing the milk.
Okay, I find it going to field 24. Uh, what we'll do, the track is well, widen the track, get that going, stick that on. And away we go. It's a fairly big field, but we've got plenty of fertilizer in here. Uh, right, we've got a little worker, crack on with that, get out of the way. Uh, we're going to find a gap in the fence. We're going to go over to our new field, sugar beet field, because I've bought the uh, Agrimash harrow over to that field. Going to get that going with the fertilising state, and then we're going to sell some milk. Um, I have got another contract just popped up for transport from Silly Pea Brewery to the spa. The spa seems to get through a lot of produce, so I'm wondering whether or not it might not be a bad idea to expand our farm shop and put a vending machine down at the spa. Um, Baron Papa messaged me and showed me it had been put in a, all around the map to give yourself sort of extra sell points in certain locations where it kind of fit where it works, you know. And uh, I'll, I suppose the only downside means I'll have to buy the land to place it, but maybe we can work out a deal with the uh, the landowners. Who knows? Hang on, we've gone too far. No, this is it. This is the field. Should be the end of here. There we go. Is here somewhere? Yes, yeah, so this is our new field of sugar beet that we bought. 44 grand. I'm just thinking, because sugar beet and potatoes yield very highly, because we've done field 38, which is huge, and this one's a fair size for sugar beet, we're going to get a lot of sugar beet. That's going to go down to the new biogas plant, not the BGA, because that pays incredibly well. Right, start that up. Turn that on. Drop that down. Cruise control on. Ah! What just happened? That's supposed to be a weeder, not a cultivator. What? Huh? Right, hire a worker. See if the worker does it. No. What is going on? So when I did it myself, it destroyed the crop. If you hire a worker, it doesn't. That's weird. Oh, okay, well, that's something to bear in mind for the future. Blimey. So, if you're using this and you're doing it on a field with crops, I haven't had that do it before. I've used this on loads of different fields with crops and without crops, and I haven't had a problem. I wonder why I did that. Oh, it's only a small bit in the corner, but you live and learn. Oh, love that. Bit of a lock up there on the back back axle. Right, I'm not touching this then. Jump out, let the worker crack on. Slightly worrying. Please don't do it again. Strange, very strange. Right. Over to the farm. Let's get some of this milk sold. I assume the price is still pretty good. We'll have a look and I'll show you what I mean. We should get a good price. If we go across to milk, right there, and we go down. Edge Grain Vault, 1221. Uh, CLG Bakery for milk, 1274. Down there. If we keep going down. The Milk Factory, 1416. Look at that. For cow salto mats, so the vending machine two one three seven, and then we've got the other. I'm not sure which of the two buildings that is for the milk, but one eight three nine. So that's brilliant. And how much have we actually got on hand? Well, let's have a quick look in our menu. Cow enclosure. We've got seventeen thousand nine hundred eighty five liters on hand. So that's pretty good. That will do us all right. Um, we're up to 60 cows now. 18 new births. Everything is ticking along. Very nicely. I might. I did say I might take one of those boxes of eggs too. Let's do that. We'll do some milk and do some eggs. Haven't been down here since it all changed. It's very picturesque. Now, unless I do it all in one go with the big tanker, which seems a bit excessive, I've got the 8,000 litre one, so I'll have to do... I'll do a couple of those, and we'll leave a little bit in there. Uh, what do I need? 
try. I could probably do it with the wheel loader, uh, wheel loader, skid steer loader, but my... I'm having to move things around now because I've got more machinery there is. I can't remember where I parked it. Never good when you lose a tractor. It's not like they're small things. I can understand it when you lose your keys, but... Where did I put that class axiom? Don't think it's got water in it. I hope it hasn't got any water in it. Nope, we're empty. Fantastic. It's not like we've got to go far. But what I will need to do is back this in because unlike a lot of the milk points where you can drive past, this one you've actually got to go into it. Probably just, but it's enough. I'll try backing. I'm, I'm not, I prefer doing it off the front three point. I find that a lot easier. Yep. I'm terrible at doing that. Just find that. go. Hell free. Milk. Yes, please. Fantastic. We're getting milk. How long did we wait? It was a while. But it's all going to be worth it. And that's the beauty. Like I say, we haven't got to go far. Just around here. I think it's the the automat is the vending machine, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it is. There we go. So let's see what we make on this. It's just good money for milk. I'm pleased with this. And then people can come to our little farm shop, they can buy what they want. Seventeen grand for eight thousand liters. I'll take that all day long. Right, let's go and do another eight thousand. That's brilliant. And then we'll go and grab some of the eggs as well. I think I might use the skid steer loader. I can pick up one of the pallets that only have a few boxes in. Um, and we need to just check which of the sell points is doing the best price for those because uh, I don't know if it's the auto mat or one of the other ones. But the price for eggs is pretty good on there too. Oh, good, good stuff. I think that's, again, it's another one of those things with season, isn't it? I think that's incredibly fulfilling. I guess uh, with real farming too, is that a lot of your year, a lot of the time is spent. And this is this is obvious. It's not, you know, it's not like I'm going to say something profound or, you know, everyone's going to be like, oh, blimey. Um, a lot of your year is spent doing jobs that you, you don't get any reward for, other than the job itself and the fact you know you're doing a, you know, the right thing or whatever. But the actual reward itself doesn't come until much later. So there's all the effort put in in advance. Um, and it takes a long time, you know, with crops and with your animals or whatever, to get to the point where you get the payback. And I think with Seasons, unlike the base game where you can get payback very, very quickly, with Seasons it is that patience of, of waiting and having to yeah, having to go through the motions. You know, you spend a lot of the year doing the jobs waiting for that payout. And when you do get a payout, and you get a good payout, it's nice, it's a good feeling. It's the endorphin release of reward that you get when you put effort in for something. You don't get the same feeling if you get reward without effort. I know, obviously, it's nice to get reward for that effort, <laughs> but um, I just think there's more of a, 
a visceral connection, I think, when you put a lot of effort in. God, listen to me going all profound. So we've made 34 grand of off 16,000 litres. That's brilliant. There's another couple of thousand litres in there, but we'll leave that for the time being. Let the cows carry on chugging away, producing. Uh, I'm going to go and put this tanker back. I'm going to grab the skid steer loader, and then we'll take one of the things of... What do you call it? Eggs. Top that there. Oh, the beauty of this trailer as well, because you can hook up with anything. It doesn't have to be a truck. So I can put the back... Oh, sorry, lorry. Let's put the back down on there. Done. Disconnect. Just pull this up here for the time being. Right, what we'll do, let's check on the old worker and see how we're getting on that contract. 97%, I would imagine it's stopped because it gets to one side of the field. There's a little strip left and it won't do it because there are trees or whatever, so I need to shift that over. So I'm going to take on that transport job. We'll have a look at this option for the this putting a vending machine in, uh, which means we'd have to buy that whole bit here, isn't it? The, where I did that video on the uh, fuel station... Oh, blimey, that's that entire chunk there. 500,000. Oh, man. That's a lot of money to spend out to place a vending machine. <laughs> a lot of money. Okay. We are starting to buy quite a lot of the, the northern half of the map. We haven't got much of the southern half, have we? Not really. I suppose we could put one of those vending machines down here at the the little farmer's market thing I've been kind of setting up over time. Enough gabbing. Get on with your work. I say, we'll grab one of them. Uh, we'll head over there, then we'll check the price and see which one we need to be at. Um, and then what I'll do is, once the fertilising contract's done, I will take on the other transport one. That I'll do off screen again. Um, and then what we'll probably do. I'll carry on with my animals. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll go down and check on the uh, the sheep again. Um, there won't be many eggs in here, to be honest with you, but a full pallet obviously is going to work out way better. But what we'll do is grab that. Yeah, so I'll just carry on doing my jobs, doing my bits and bobs, keeping up with the... Uh, the wool production and then we need to get into late spring because we need to be in that planting window for our corn and our uh, soybean then we'll get those in the ground everything will need herbiciding and then uh, we roll through that cycle again it's you know doing jobs doing bits and bobs uh, we'll look at when we get around to harvest season buying another harvester like I said um, and we'll kind of go from there really another year rolls round all the jobs continue I think we'll probably scoot through this year a lot quicker because there's not all the setting up and prep to do, it's just all the kind of the, the chugging along. Um, so I think this year we'll get through a lot quicker, but we should see the fruits of our labours, hopefully. Right, so this one I need to check. So we're on eggs, which are there. Oh, it's dropping. Oh no, the automat, 3,600. That's pretty cool. So we'll go to the same one again. We'll go to the... Uh, Make sure I don't go near the sell points for any of the others. If we go to the the uh, vending machine again, it should go automatically, will it? 1,461 for three boxes. Like I say, full pallet of those, we're going to do alright. So our chickens, which didn't really cost us hardly anything to buy, we are going to make plenty of money off of them. On the scale of, you know, are we going to make hundreds of thousands over a long period of time? Yeah, potentially we could make a lot of money on them. Good stuff. Right, milk and eggs sold. I might sell that other pallet. I might get rid of this actually as well. I'm just thinking I don't need four pallets sitting there. I only need two really. One to fill up, one to the side. When I remove the one that's full and place an empty... 
Don't just keep swapping them around. I don't need four pallets. I've got to do separate one of these from the other. That's going to prove a little bit harder. Because you have to just get the straps on one tiny little bit, which I'll do now. We'll take that as well. So literally just on the edge. Like oh, too far, too far, too far. That maybe. There we go. Fantastic. So yeah, we'll get rid of the surplus. We'll let the other one fill up completely and then we'll just start swapping room. Brilliant. Right, I'll go and check on the uh, worker doing the fertilising in a moment. Keeping on the animals. Every time we get enough manure, I will take the manure down to the biogas plant. We'll sell the manure, then we'll sell the digestate. That'll be a rolling process that will carry on. I'm going to need to, like I said, skipping through the year, I'm going to need to keep an eye on the grass because I do want to make hay again. And I don't want to have the same debacle I had last year with it raining and stuff. So we'll keep an eye on the weather forecast, we'll keep an eye on our grass fields. Um, and we'll do that. So what I'm going to do is just the two surplus egg pallets that I bought, I'm going to sell them. Oh, okay, that's same value 960 sell, and it's not letting me. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. So I thought you could sell them. Okay, I'll just take them to one side then. Maybe I need to take them to a main sale point. I can't, surely I can't just be stuck with them. And I dare just go into the main menu and sell a random pallet because I could end up selling the one that's got all the eggs in it. I don't want to do that. I oh, you, it should come up, shouldn't it, if you try and sell something and there's stuff in it. Let's, uh. Yeah, hang on one minute. Nope, that didn't work. I thought what it might let me do is, uh, like you do when you've got placeables and stuff, you pick the one you want to sell, but it just gave you the option to sell, and I can't take the chance of selling the wrong one. Like I said, it should come up and tell you um, that you've got something in it and that you need to sell the produce in it as well, but I don't want to take the chance of it not doing that and me wasting all that egg production. So I'll just dump those there for the time being. They're not taking up too much space, and I've got slots available so that's all good right this way oh our, our chicken cull I didn't kind of go back into that but we're at 373 so we're at 500 so we got rid of quite a lot then like I say as new births happen uh, we will then just go through and just take out all the males as you can see, we've made just now 2,200 and something on eggs. I can't remember how much we actually bought our original chickens for, but we didn't spend a lot of money on them. So realistically, it, it doesn't matter that we got rid of a load. And we did make a little bit of money when we sold them all. I think I made about four, five hundred pounds. So uh, we yeah, did alright. It was exactly as I thought. It was it was a, so far over here, it wouldn't run up the edge because the the hedge and the f trees and stuff like that. So I just need to shift it over a little bit. Oh, it needs to do three more percent. The contract will be complete. So uh, yeah, nearly there. And then I'll take like I say, I'll take on the transport job. I'll do that off screen. There we go. Contract on field twenty four complete. Finished. Stop there. Put the tracks in. Got well, a lot of machinery needs cleaning and a little bit of uh, with a bit of TLC, I think. 
Uh, I think I'm going to buy another uh, another one of the vending machines now and put it over there at the little farmer's market. Uh, what was it? Oh no, I need to <laughs> complete on the contract would be a great idea, wouldn't it? So, contract completed, 16 grand. We'll take that. Transport job, There's some more fertilising jobs. Uh, yeah, see these ones. Oh, look at that, sowing, 51 grand. Potatoes, that's going to take some time. Field 41's a big old field as well. But it's little jobs, like I say, little jobs like this. These fertilising jobs, if you mop a load of these up, four, five, six of those, you can make 20 grand, and your actual outlay in fertiliser isn't actually that high. So, uh, let's accept the contract on that. We'll do the transporting job in a little while. What I'm going to do is head back. Which way should I go? Let's go this way. Could go across country, but we'll go this way. And with that... We have come to the end of another episode. Uh, I was hoping to get more planting done, but like I say, what we'll do is we'll bounce next. It'll be into late spring. We're going to keep an eye on the grass and the growth of that, and then we'll cut a load of grass and let that lay out, but we'll keep an eye on the weather for that, because obviously we need some nice warm weather to get our hay production going. We'll do a load more hay. We'll get that into storage. Any surplus then we've got, we can... Uh, or what I could do is wait for the second cut of the year, and uh, all of that then will go for silage. I think we did that last year, didn't we? Something along those lines, anyway. So, uh, yeah, we'll do a first and second cut then. But yeah, this this is the, the larger, the multi-storage. I can use that if we do fill ours up. It's always an option. So, uh, all good. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you have, give us a like. Well, just give us a like anyway, just for the sheer entertainment value. Um, if you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you choose to do. Thanks for watching.